what's up guys it's going to be time to finish this one so let's do it this is our last section space time and spatial velocity actually is only I think theoretical let you know that it exists but exercises are not that difficult so it's just to let you know it exists so space time is obtained by dividing the reactor volume by the volumetric flow rate then you get the units of time. So let's do it. Time, what does this time mean? Uh, I call it the residence time or it also called holding time. And it's the time necessary to process one reactor volume of fluid based on the entrance condition. So it's kind of abstract, but let's say it's the time it will stay or process that fluid unit. Okay. Once again, it's measured at the entrance or inlet. So you have your volumetric flow rate in one, or let's say zero, and you got another volumetric flow rate out. Uh, be sure to reference it to this one here. Typical space times. Well, if you are having a batch reactor, it's about minutes or to even lots of hours. I don't know, maybe 10 hours, 20 hours. CSDRs are 2 minutes, 2 hours, not that much, maybe maximum, I don't know, 5 hours, even 8 hours. And PFR, it's about 2 seconds to 1 hour. Why seconds? Because you are in a pipe. So you just go, mix, and go out. And I tell you 1 hour because maybe it's a huge. I know many reactors are very, very huge, so they go, they're in a small pipe, hopefully you know from momentum, and then they go to this huge diameter so it they go slower and slower uh, yes that's essentially space time of typical uh, reactors now let's do this little example we got this tank volume 20 cubic meters and we got this volumetric flow rate 0 0.01 cubic meters per second and I want to calculate the space time so by definition is reactor volume divided by the volume volumetric flow rate so this one goes here and this one goes here you divide cubic meter goes cubic meter goes second goes up and you get 20 seconds what does that mean means that probably you get this volume into this tank this volumetric flow sorry you will take about 20 seconds to process that amount so your volume is about 20 cubic meters you can say that oh, points point 20 cubic meters you can say that you take 20 seconds to process that amount so it's a good like an easy very fast way to say how much is the holding time or residence time which is not true because actually you could have different holding times and residence times of even substances but as I tell you it's a very fast way to know how much time in average or in an easy calculation you can get now spatial velocity, what is that? I love to call it is simply the inverse of the space time. Actually, there's a definition. But by definition, it's volumetric flow rate divided by the reactor volume, but there's even definition that say it's the inverse of the space time. One divided by state the space time. And you can get liquid hourly spatial vol uh, velocities or gas hourly spatial velocities. Uh, yeah, spatial velocities. I'm not going to explain it because it's about theory and we are not going to use it but it's good to know that you are at least uh, informed that there exists uh, liquid and gas hourly special velocities because then maybe you go to an industry in which they use a lot of this concept and at least you say well I don't know it but I know it where I can find it and I can read a little bit more so I don't look like a clown so yeah Thank you for giving me this information. Now comes uh, an exercise. I'm not going to cut the video because, as I told you, this is just theoretic. So, reactor space and time and space velocity. So, calculate this one here and the space velocity, okay, of examples 2 and 3. And if you remember, the example 2 was 6.4 cubic meter, was a CSTR. The first CSTR we calculated. And this one, hopefully you remember, I do remember it because I did it like three hours ago. This is the PFR. We just calculated. It's the first one, the, the alone, no series, no, no conversion, no. just the first one we did. 
so check them out and if you don't know them okay just make them as theory okay what will be for this one and for this one values but if you do remember you are getting each time better uh, comprehension of that problem so let's do space time here reactor volume divided by volumetric flow rate my reactor volume was that my volumetric flow rate is this one I got 3200 seconds which is not that tangible I changed it to hours and it's almost 90% of an hour which will be 54 minutes I think but let's do it in hours spatial velocity you can do it either by definition or inverting the the space time I inverted and I got this one here and I'm done perfect now that now we check the example number three I got it here uh, the volume is right here and the volumetric flow rate is right here I got 1080 seconds and as you see before the or as you saw before the batch now the PFR has lower amounts than the CSTR and it makes sense because in the PFR you got this kind of pipe and they just go and mix and react but the CSTR is literally a tank it's a holding tank they mix and they go out so it makes sense that it's about three times more uh, time required to operate that quantity and yeah essentially you're operating this was 80% and you are achieving here also 80% so if you ask me I will prefer this one because it's faster and you require less volume so yeah essentially that's my final answer and okay let's just do that invert it you get these 3.3 hours or minus hour so you can see here it's also tr almost three times perfecto if you need more problems once again guys don't hesitate to go to the web page I've got a lot of content there you can check even other courses I got mass balance I'm going to get some energy balances uh, transport phenomena all the operations heat transfer momentum mass transfer whatever now reactor engineering if you are really interested go there check out the solve problem section I got many problems solved especially on this chapter because I think this one is the typical chapter in which either you're good and you get the best of the course or you're not that good you don't care yourself and you just crash in the next uh, chapter so please do it for me or for you go check it out and I think I, you will like the course see you in the next video for this summary What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.